It all started when I first met her. Jessica was a shy, timid girl who kept to herself, always sitting alone in the back of the classroom. I didn't pay much attention to her at first, but as time went on, I couldn't help but notice her more and more. She was very beautiful though, and I found myself glancing at her from the side of my eyes. I apologized for sounding like a creep, but I just couldn't help it. There was something about her that drew me in, something mysterious and alluring. I was finding her so attractive, and soon I found myself wanting to be with her. I finally got enough courage to ask her out. She seemed very excited, and so was I. We went out a few times, and it was incredible. She was all about me, and I loved it. I could see us having a great future together. Things were good, for a while. It wasn't until later that I discovered the truth. She was a girl obsessed with me to the point of insanity. She would do anything to be with me, to keep me close, to make me hers and hers alone. And when I say anything, I mean anything. At first, her actions were harmless enough. Jessica would leave little notes in my locker, send me text messages throughout the day, and always find a way to be near me at all times. I thought it was a sweet gesture, a sign that she was all about me. But as time went on, her behavior became more and more disturbing. I started to notice that she would follow me home from school, hiding in the bushes and watching me from a distance. She would watch me through my bedroom window when I was doing my homework. When I would catch her, she would knock on my window like she just got there. However, after the first coincidence, I started watching out as I was starting to think she was watching me. I saw her do it many times, and I started to just ignore her to see how long she would be out there. One of the times, she was out there for four hours, just watching me. She would also text me at all hours of the night, even when I asked her to stop. I had to eventually turn my phone to Do Not Disturb to avoid her texts. When I would wake up and turn off Do Not Disturb, I would see hundreds of text messages asking me, why don't you love me? Why aren't you answering me? Do you think I'm ugly? Things like that. For a pretty girl, she had the worst self-esteem on the planet. I tried to be gentle with her, to let her down easy, but she was relentless. One day, she cornered me in the school hallway, her eyes wild and desperate. She begged me to be with her, to love her like she loved me. I tried to tell her that I couldn't, that I didn't feel the same way, but she wouldn't listen. I told her the truth. I couldn't take it anymore. The text messages, the stalking, and staring at me through my window. I knew everything, and I didn't want to be with her anymore. No matter how beautiful she was, I was starting to be concerned for my safety. And that's when things took a turn for the worse. She started to become vindictive, lashing out at anyone who she perceived as a threat to our relationship. She would tell lies about my friends to get them in trouble, and would sabotage any new romantic relationships that I started after her. All the girls were starting to turn me down because they knew Jessica was crazy. She tried to force herself on me, but I resisted. I managed to fight her off and call the police, but by the time they arrived, it was too late. She had taken her own life, leaving behind a note that said that she couldn't live knowing I was with somebody else. And that's when I realized the true horror of what I had been dealing with. She was a girl obsessed with me to the point of madness, and she in fact did go completely mad. And now she was gone, leaving me with the guilt of what had just happened. I never spoke of her again. I never told anyone what happened. But every now and then, I catch a glimpse of her in my dreams her eyes full of love and madness. I wonder if I'll ever be able to escape her, to live a normal life without the constant memory of what she had done. There was a girl named Brandy who was always known for her extreme love for her boyfriend, Josh. Josh was a popular guy in their school and everyone adored him. Brandy was always by his side and no one ever saw Josh without Brandy. They had been dating for three years, and Brandy's love for Josh only grew stronger every day. But Josh had a secret. He was getting tired of Brandy's obsessive love for him, 
He wanted to break up with her, but he was scared of her reaction. He knew that Brandy was not an ordinary girl, and he didn't want to hurt her or anyone else. He decided to keep their relationship going until he could find a way to break up with her safely. One day, Josh got a text message from an anonymous number. The message read, If you want to get rid of Brandy, meet me tonight at the park. Josh was shocked and scared. He didn't know who sent the message or what their intention was. He was confused but also relieved. He saw this as an opportunity to get out of his relationship with Brandy without hurting her. That night, Josh went to the abandoned building in the park alone. He didn't tell anyone where he was going. When he arrived at the abandoned building by the park, he saw a girl standing in the dark. The girl was wearing a black hoodie, and her face was hidden. She spoke in a low, whispery voice. Are you Josh? she asked. Josh nodded his head. I know what you want, the girl said. I can help you. How? Josh asked, confused. I can make Brandy disappear, the girl replied. Josh was horrified. He didn't want Brandy to get hurt or worse. He quickly turned to leave, but the girl grabbed his arm. Don't worry, the girl said. I won't hurt her. I'll just make her go away. How? Josh asked. Leave it to me, the girl said. Just give me some time. Josh left the building, feeling scared and uneasy. He didn't know who the girl was, and he didn't know what she was capable of. He tried to forget the incident and continue his relationship with Brandy, but things just got worse. Brandy's obsession with Josh grew stronger every day. She started becoming more overbearing, following him wherever he went. She even started threatening other girls who talked to him or looked at him with violence. Brandy even got in a fight with a girl for just looking at Josh and mouthing off to her. She beat that girl within an inch of her life when Josh finally got her to stop fighting. That girl ended up in the ICU, but somehow Brandy did not get in trouble for it. Her dad was friends with the local sheriff and got her out of it with a warning. Josh was scared for his life and the lives of others. He knew that Brandy was not normal, and he didn't know what to do. One day, Josh got a call from the police. They told him that Brandy had gone missing. They found her phone and some of her belongings at an abandoned building near the park. The police suspected foul play and wanted to question Josh. Josh was horrified. He didn't know what to say or do. But he was scared that the hooded girl might have something to do with it. He decided to go to the police and tell them everything. When he arrived at the police station, he was shocked to see the anonymous hooded girl sitting outside of the station. What's going on? Josh asked. The girl turned to him and smiled. Don't worry, Josh. Brandy is gone, and you had nothing to do with it. Just tell them the truth and we can be together finally. I will be good to you and won't treat you like that whore Brandy did. But she had an N95 mask on and I really couldn't see. The hood was making her eyes impossible to identify as well. Josh was shocked. With this new and disturbing information, Josh went into the interrogation room and told the detectives everything. He even told them that the girl was outside the station right now. The officers ran out of the room and looked to find the girl, but she was already gone. They reviewed the security footage and saw the girl Josh was talking about but they could not identify her. The detectives had determined that Josh was not at fault for Brandy's disappearance and let him go. A few months passed by and Josh was now with a girl named Jennifer. It was so great that Josh was able to find love once again. Jennifer was kind, sweet, and gentle. All the things that Brandy wasn't. She was so good to him and he was so happy to be in a good relationship finally. However, he started to notice that she would get really upset if he didn't answer her texts immediately. He just thought, she really likes me, and I guess she'll always be loyal. There was a girl named Destiny who had always been a bit obsessive about her crushes. She would follow them around, taking pictures and videos of them without their knowledge. 
and write down their names on every available surface she could find. Like Destiny and Guy's name, together forever, stuff like that. She had amassed thousands of pictures and videos of different guys. She would stalk them until she found a better looking guy that she desired to be with more than the previous one. But it wasn't until she met her latest crush, a guy named Grayson, that would finally result in her going all the way with her obsessions. She wanted to actually be with this one. Destiny was convinced that Grayson was her soulmate, the only person in the world who would ever truly understand her. However, she started out way too strong for anyone, but especially Grayson. She would leave notes for him in places he would usually go, professing her undying love and begging him to notice her. He thought this was some kind of joke. No one is this nuts. This must have been his friends playing a joke on him. Once, he accidentally met Destiny and realized that it wasn't a joke, and he was terrified. Grayson was not interested in her at all, and in fact, found her behavior more than a little unsettling. But Destiny refused to give up. She started stalking Grayson everywhere he went, watching him from a distance and taking notes on his daily schedule from morning to night. She even broke into his house one night, just to see what it would feel like to be close to him. And that's when she found something that made her blood run cold. In Grayson's bedroom, Destiny found a collection of photos and notes that he had been keeping about her. There were naked photos of her in the shower and in her bedroom. She did like to be naked whenever possible, but was surprised that Grayson was able to get such great pictures of her without her knowledge. If she would have known, she would just let him come in and take all the pictures he wanted. She loved him that much. He had been following her too, watching her every move and taking videos of her without her knowledge. Brandy was shocked and horrified, but also a little bit excited. Maybe Grayson did love her after all in his own twisted way. This made her undying love for him that much more. From that moment on, Destiny's obsession with Grayson spiraled out of control. She would break into his house regularly. She started trying on his clothes and cologne and even went as far as to dye her hair to match his color. And all the while, Grayson remained distant and would not just admit that he was obsessed with her too. This was irritating her. She was getting really mad and he was being such a selfish prick and wouldn't just love her. She was too nervous to confront him though and just let her feelings tear her apart. One day, Destiny decided enough was enough. She was tired of waiting for Grayson to notice her. She was tired of waiting for Grayson to admit his true feelings, so she decided to take matters into her own hands. She broke into his house again, this time armed with a knife, and waited for him to come home. When he finally did, she pounced on him, intent on making him love her no matter what. Grayson fought back, but Destiny was too strong and too desperate to be deterred. She stabbed him repeatedly, each thrust of her knife fueling her delusional belief that they were meant to be together. And when she was finally done, she sat down next to his lifeless body and smiled. Destiny was finally happy because she knew that Grayson would never be able to leave her. They would be together forever, just as she always wanted. And even though the police eventually caught up to her and locked her away for the rest of her life, Destiny didn't care. She had achieved her ultimate goal, and that's all that mattered. I was scrolling through my Instagram feed when I came across a strange and unsettling story. It was a video of a person standing in the corner of a room, their face obscured by the darkness. The video was distorted and hard to see, but the figure in the corner could be made out in the flickering light. It looked like a teenage man, about 18 years old and tall. I couldn't really tell, but it looked like the person turned its head and looked right at me. It felt like the piercing eyes were staring directly into my soul. I suddenly felt hot and broke out in a heavy sweat. I felt extremely nauseous. I had to drop the phone and get a salad bowl from my kitchen. I threw up multiple times until all the food I had eaten was gone and I was starting to dry heave. After that, you would think I would just have left Instagram and stopped watching the video. 
but for some reason, I was drawn back to my phone. I picked up the phone and started watching again. The figure of a man started to slowly leave the corner and walk into the open. He was not moving at normal speed, but in extreme slow motion. It looked like he was slowed down from special effects, but the video was raw and live. I heard white noise in the background with a constant bump sound, like when a record is done playing an album and it's just hitting the needle on the record. As I watched, the man slowly began to move towards the camera, his arms outstretched. I could feel my heart racing as I tried to look away, but I was frozen in place, unable to look away from the screen. He was moving so slow, but I was paralyzed and couldn't move anything on my body at all. Why did I pick my phone back up, I thought. I was going to die from a heart attack from watching the stupid video on Instagram. Suddenly, the figure lunged towards the camera, and I screamed at the top of my lungs. The video was suddenly cut off, leaving me with a feeling of pure terror. I couldn't shake the image from my mind, and I couldn't stop thinking about who or what the shadowy figure could have been. I knew I had to find out, but I was too afraid to watch the rest of the story. But after how I felt, I shouldn't want to know what happened and just forget about it. However, I was compelled to find out more for some reason. I'm sure it'll be fine this time, right? Your sense of curiosity should not outweigh your sense of fight or flight. If something is dangerous, don't interact with it and put yourself at risk. They say curiosity killed the cat. There was loud thunder and streaks of lightning outside. It was predicted to be a major storm, and it was best not to go out in this mess. The rain was coming down pretty hard, and I enjoyed the rhythmic sounds of nature providing life to the world, washing away the dirty grime of the city. It was a great night to get under the covers and scroll through my Instagram feed. I had been scrolling through my Instagram for a while when I noticed that I saw something move from my peripheral vision. I suddenly got the feeling that someone was watching me. Seeing something move in the dark from my side began to be more frequent. Every time I looked up from my phone, I could see shadows moving. However, every time I looked up from my phone, I didn't see anything. I tried to ignore it, but it was getting harder and harder to do. I turned the lights on and looked around the room. I did not see anything on the sides or underneath my bed. I turned the lights back off and tried to get back into cuddle mode again. I was scrolling through my Instagram feed, trying to distract myself, when I saw a post from a user I didn't recognize. The image was a black and white photograph of a man standing in the woods. His face was obscured by the darkness, but I could see the outlines of his body and trees behind it. I felt a chill run down my spine as I looked closer. The man seemed to be staring at me directly, and there was something unsettling about the way he looked. The black and white post suddenly came to life and had motion. It was like the art picture motion that has become popular on different apps. The background was moving and the hooded man began to walk forward towards me. I was intrigued but also concerned. The man started to get really close to my screen, filling up the picture almost completely. I quickly closed the app and turned off my phone, trying to shake off the creepy feeling of dread that had settled over me. I knew after that I wouldn't be able to sleep that night. Suddenly, I heard a whooshing sound outside. I peeked through the blinds to see what was making that noise. There was a man with a hood looking right at me. He was starting to slowly walk towards my house. I was playing on my phone when I stumbled upon a strange Instagram account. The profile picture was of a shadowy figure with glowing eyes, and the bio simply read, Enter at your own risk. This seemed like one of those horror accounts that are everywhere these days. I do love these, and I'm always curious what stories or horror-related material is in their posts. I'm one of those 90s babies, and loved going to Blockbuster Video and sneaking to the horror section to see the scary art on the VHS tapes. I always wondered what was behind that incredible art that I saw but never got to as I was underage and my parents definitely didn't want me to rent them. Now that I'm an adult, I get to do whatever I want. 
As I scrolled through the account stories, I got goosebumps and a strong feeling in my stomach. I typically like to get a little scared, but this was different. Each post seemed to be more chilling than the last, with images of ghost sightings that looked pretty real, and wave files of blood-curdling screams. I don't know why I kept clicking on stuff like that, but I was intrigued for some reason. After looking for a while, I pulled myself away from it and tried to do something else. I tried to forget about the account, but somehow it seemed to follow me no matter where I went. I tried to look at multiple other pages so the creepy account didn't appear anymore. I hate the way when you look at something, the algorithm keeps showing you stuff like that over and over. It was showing mass suicides, people in torture chairs getting their limbs removed, and decapitations. It was truly horrifying stuff. I got off Instagram and switched to TikTok. There, I saw the same horrible stuff over and over. Terrible car crashes and war crimes, firing squads, people on fire. This was all real footage too. I got on YouTube and it was the same thing. I felt like someone had hacked my phone and was making me watch the worst murder videos I had ever seen. I know people do horrible things to each other, but I did not want to see it. I felt like I was out of options and had to unplug from social media when I was looking at my phone and found out the cookies are stored on your phone and will carry over to other websites. With this new discovery, I erased all my cookies and all my watch history from my sites. Finally, I got some relief from that crazy stuff I was being forced to watch. Now I just stick to funny videos and don't like to explore that weird stuff anymore. From time to time, erase your cookies and watch history the cookies track what you do and think you are into whatever you're looking at. Safe exploring for all my horror lovers out there. My friends and I decided to go on a hike in the mountains. We heard about a beautiful trail that led to a stunning waterfall and couldn't wait to see it all for ourselves. We were going to make a day of it together. We packed up and headed out. As we set out on the trail, everything seemed perfect. The landscape was one of the most beautiful we had ever seen. On the hike, we were talking and having a great time together. The birds were singing, the trees were rustling, and the sun was shining. We were getting a healthy dose of nature and friendship. Everything was going perfectly. However, as we continued on, things started to feel off. The air became thicker and heavier, and the trail seemed to stretch on endlessly. Maybe we were just getting tired, or maybe it was something else. Soon, the friendly chat was turning silent. Everyone was starting to get winded and moody. Then the worst thing for us happened. We soon realized that we were lost. We had taken a wrong turn and were now far from the main trail. We tried to retrace our steps, but it was no use. We were completely lost in the wilderness. I started to remember how this could probably have happened. When we were walking on the trail, we saw a deer, and we all followed it to see its beauty. Instead of going back to the main trail, we saw a squirrel, a shack, and a bunny. I guess we had been off the trail for a while and found a trail that resembled the main trail, only come to find out now, it is definitely not the main trail. We were starting to feel hopeless. As the day turned to night, we started to panic. We had no food no water, no shelter. We huddled together, trying to stay warm, but the air was starting to get severely cold. As the hours passed, strange noises began to surround us. We could hear rustling in the bushes and distant howls of wild animals. Fear consumed us as we realized we were not alone in the woods. Just when we thought things couldn't get any worse, a figure appeared out of the darkness. It was a haggard, wild-eyed man covered in dirt and blood. He screamed at us, brandishing a sharp stick as a weapon. We ran as fast as we could, but the man chased after us. We could hear his ragged breathing behind us, getting closer and closer. We were terrified, knowing that we were no match for him. Just as we thought we were doomed, we stumbled upon a small cabin. 
we burst through the door, barricading it behind us. As the man pounded on the door, trying to get in, we realized that we had stumbled upon a hunter's cabin. There was food, water, and a fireplace to warm us. We huddled together, praying that the man would give up and go away. And eventually, he did. We never knew who he was or where he came from, but we were just grateful to be alive. That night, we learned the hard way that the wilderness can be a dangerous place, but we also learned to always be prepared and to trust our instincts, and more importantly, we learned to never take a hike for granted again. It was a beautiful day for a hike. I had planned to take a long hike through the wilderness and enjoy the peacefulness of the nature. It was so hard to get away from work and just relax. I know that some of you do not consider hiking a relaxing thing, but I do. It is because I work in a busy office and there is always something going on. There's barely any time to breathe there. The wilderness eliminates all the outside noise and it's just peaceful. I love it. I had not been on this trail before, but I heard from a coworker that it was pretty good. I got a basic rundown of the terrain, nothing too tough. I had done plenty of hikes, so I was not too worried about it. As I was making my way through the trail, it was nice. The landscape had lots of sights to see and enjoy. I passed by some rock formations and decided to take some pictures. At a certain point in the trail, it began to narrow. I went through a collection of crisscross trees to enter the rest of the trail. This looked interesting, so I got a little excited. This could lead to something interesting, I thought. As I proceeded through the trail, I noticed that the path seemed to be getting more and more overgrown. This part of the trail was definitely less maintained than the beginning portion of the trail. I brushed it off and continued through the trail, thinking it was just a small obstacle. But as I kept walking, the overgrown bush and trees became thicker and thicker. It was getting harder and harder to see the path ahead. I tried to turn back, but I couldn't find my way out of the thick foliage. I pulled out my phone to call a friend to let them know that I might have an issue, but there was no service in this area. In the distance, I saw a cabin. I used a machete I brought to chop down the thick foliage to get to the house. If someone lived there, hopefully they had a phone or a radio. I think at this point, simply doubling back could be an issue. If I got even more lost, I could end up lost in the woods at night with no shelter. That is not really what I wanted. Finally, I was able to clear a path and make it to the house. The house was greatly weather damaged from the elements. It did look like someone was living there, so there was some hope. I knocked on the front door. The door slowly opened, and to my surprise, it was a beautiful woman. Can I help you? Suddenly, a little shy, I said. I was on the trail and I got lost. Do you have a phone I can use? She giggled and said, no worries, it happens all the time. She invited me to come in and use her phone. She told me she had a landline because of the bad service. She also told me she had an extra room that hikers had stayed before when the sun was going down and it was too late for them to go back. They would stay there and leave in the morning. Although I did not know this woman, and you can't just judge people on their looks, I agreed that I would stay as the sun was going to set in the next 45 minutes. I called a friend of mine and let him know I had been lost. I told him that I would be staying in a cabin that I wandered into when I got lost. He thought that was the dumbest thing he has ever heard. I agreed, but the woman here seems nice and said that other lost hikers had stayed there before. I told him that I really didn't have a choice. I literally had no clue where to go to link back up with the trail, and I needed daylight. I told him that I would call him in the morning and let him know when I was headed back. I looked in the room and it looked cozy. This would work. I unpacked a little and settled in. The woman asked me if I needed anything. I told her I was good and would be turning in for the night. She was very considerate. With that, I went into the room and went to sleep. 
I woke up to the loud sound of an object falling on the floor. It was pitch black and I could not see anything. I figured something just fell. Suddenly, I remembered that I was in a stranger's house and not in the safety of my own. I jumped up to find a light and suddenly I was stabbed right in the back. I was no longer looking for a light but the door to make a quick exit. The woman was stabbing me with something in the dark. I threw her out of the way and ran through the door. I made it outside and away from the cabin. Now I was without my pack and I didn't have a flashlight. I debated whether I should get it or just run. Suddenly the front door busted open and out came a woman with a butcher's knife in her hand. Forget it, I'm out. I ran as far away from the house as I could get, trying to retrace my steps in the moonlight. Surprisingly, I was able to see where I had cut the foliage and got back on track. I passed through the crisscross tree entrance and was back on the trail. I followed it closely and was able to find my car. Luckily, I had kept my keys in my pocket, but no cell phone. I was able to start the car and get back to town. I found the police station and told one officer on duty what happened. He called another person for backup. He seemed genuinely concerned, so I don't think anything like this has happened before. He called another person for backup, and we all went to find the cabin to retrieve my stuff and to find this woman. We made it back to the cabin, and the police knocked on the door. The door burst open, and the woman stabbed the officer closest to the door. As he fell over, the other officer shot her. Obviously, my story checks out now. After the dust had settled, the woman was put in handcuffs. The officer was able to recover from being stabbed, and I got all my stuff back and out of the house. I guess the biggest lesson is to prepare your hiking pack for the worst case scenario so you don't have to stay at some creepy cabin in the woods that you find. In hindsight, that was probably a bad plan. It was a very hot summer day when my friends and I decided to go on a hike in the mountains. We packed our bags with plenty of water, snacks, and all the necessary supplies and set off on our adventure. As we hiked deeper into the woods, the temperature seemed to drop considerably and the air became much cooler. This was a nice, welcome relief. We might have been a little overzealous thinking to hike in the heat like that. The trail was narrow and winding, with dense trees on either side. It was peaceful and serene until we heard a faint rustling in the bushes. We all froze looking around nervously. It's probably just a small animal, one of my friends said, trying to calm us down. But the rustling grew louder and closer. Suddenly, a figure burst out of the bushes and lunged at us. It was a wild-eyed man, his hair and beard matted and unkempt. He was screaming and waving a branch around like a weapon. He smelled so bad and was just plain crazy. We all screamed and scattered, running as fast as we could. He chased us for a while, and we eventually lost him. He was pretty fast, and we thought he would catch us for sure. We had all gotten far enough away, and were free from him now. However, we didn't stop running until we were out of the woods and back on the main trail. Panting and shaking, we called for help, and were eventually rescued by some park rangers. The park rangers looked in the area we described, and they eventually did find him. They took him into the station. Once he sobered up from all the alcohol and drugs he was on, he revealed what happened. His name was Chris. He was the best man at a bachelor party. They had started in town at some bars and clubs, having a great time. Later that night, most of the group had retired for the night. He was drunk, but still ready to party. He had met some women that invited him to a local bar. He agreed, and off they went. The local bar was located pretty close to the trail. The women had taught Chris into doing some hardcore stuff with them, and they were dancing like crazy at this bar. The locals would see these women bring out-of-towners in, get them loaded up on drugs, and dance in crazy ways. They thought it was the funniest thing ever. When the bar closed, Chris didn't know where he was. He tried to get a cab outside, but there were none. 
He started walking and stumbling back to his motel and accidentally got on the trail in his confusion. He was lost for four days in the woods and had a bag of some substance the woman gave him to keep him going, keeping him in a perpetual state of crazy. He had passed out in the bushes and was awakened by our hiking group. He started swinging the first thing he found at us because he didn't know where he was and who we were. He admitted that he was out of his mind and was very thankful to us for finding him. In a few more days, he might have been dead. Be careful when putting stuff in your body. Know who it is that's giving it to you. Their intentions might not be the best for you. On the hike, we were talking and had to have it. He screamed at us, brandishing a sharp... <laughs> I told her I was good and would be turning on... Surprisingly, I was able to find... Surprisingly, I was able to see where... Ha- the locals would often see these women bring out-of-towners in to get loaded up on drugs and dance in... in <clears throat> um, he admitted... And eventually, he started walking and 